Let's start with some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. And the good news, the Rams will be the second team in NFL history to play oh, in the Super Bowl in its home stadium. That day kicked a tie-breaking 30-yard field goal to bring the Rams back from the 10-point fourth quarter deficit yesterday. The Rams play the Cincinnati Bengals on February 13th at SoFi. The number of COVID-19 patients in L.A. County has dropped for six consecutive days. But the state says there were 14 more people in intensive care yesterday. In Orange County, the number of people in the hospital with COVID also declined for the sixth straight day. So you've got three COVID-19 vaccinations, booster shots, and PCR testing that will be available at three LA County Assessor's Office this week. The tests are available today at the South District Office, office in Signal Hill, Wednesday at the Lancaster Regional Office, and next Sunday at the East District Office in South Del Monte. If you go to UCLA or UC Irvine, you better get your kids back to class today. In-person classes will resume. The announcement follows three weeks of remote instruction promised or prompted by a winter surge in COVID-19 cases, but school officials say all returning students today will have to show proof of a booster dose of COVID-19 vaccine if they want to be eligible. Hundreds of people have marched in cities across America to protest Asian hate. They marked the one-year anniversary yesterday of the death of an 84-year-old man from Thailand who was attacked while out in a walk in San Francisco. Attacks against Asian Americans have increased since COVID-19 first started in Wuhan, China in 2019. With the number of illegal immigrants crossing the California-Mexico border got up in 2021. The number of unaccompanied kids went up 82%. In 2020, it was 1,040. By the end of last fiscal year, it was 1,888. The numbers were provided by the Department of Homeland Security. The results were the highest number of illegal crossings for the same time period. In 2020, 19,961 came across, and by the end of 2021, it was 50,358, a 152% increase. He's going to return to find news. When we come back, we'll talk with ABC's Tom Rivers about Britain considering the foreign troops to the Eastern Europe in the five years. All of the Russian troops on the border with Ukraine. Is this going to be nothing but defensive or are they probably or both? We'll talk about both of that. Both of those options in just a few minutes. And I would say good morning to Miss Kelly Lapini. Hi, Miss. Good morning. 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 Good
watch. And they're placed in Colorado and say, you sit there and watch. Um, what, are they, what are their troops supposed to do in Estonia if, in fact, Russia invades Ukraine? Okay, that makes sense. Then good. Then, I mean, I don't think we need to stir the Putin pot any more than we already have. When it uh, comes to Putin, and I'm just curious, in, U in the UK, um, I know a lot of people have accused the U.S. and other NATO allies of sort of stirring the pot, but how do, mm -hmm. how do people in the U.K. look at what is going on right now? Do they think that we're doing right in the threats of either sanctions, possibly even on President Putin by President Biden? He said he'd put them on him himself if he had to. And things like, how, do, how are they viewing what we're doing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a little bit more complicated over here. They, they, they understand over here that, uh, you know, NATO was designed in 1949 as a pushback against any threat to the Soviet Union, 12 countries. And, of course, it all kind of turned on its head after the fall of the war. Uh, and as we mentioned at that time, Gorbachev says, look, you can unify Germany, you can become NATO. But it was kind of an unwritten, if you will, understanding, saying, look, you don't, we don't want you guys rocking up on our forces. And since then now, we now have 30 NATO countries. And if Ukraine were to become uh, a NATO country uh, on the eastern flank, it would be 250 miles.
This comes as people are just digging out from this weekend's historic blizzard in the Northeast. All-time snowiest day on record in Providence, Rhode Island. Snowiest January on record now for Atlantic City. And this morning, the wind chill where I'm standing is zero. So you know we are still navigating the ice. Meanwhile, we're watching a whole new storm. ABC's Ginger Z says the next big storm threatens to bring snow and ice from Denver to Chicago by the middle of the week. I know, I know that we have friends on the East Coast who say to us, why would you live out there in California where you guys have all those earthquakes? And I say, because we don't have the crappy weather you have there. Sorry to anybody from the East Coast who's listening. I will refrain from the weather forecast for a while for you. A former TV doctor is headed to court in L.A. He's Emmy-winning medical correspondent Dr. Bruce Hensel. He's accused of using an online messaging app to ask a nine-year-old girl to send him suggestive photos. He's scheduled for arraignment Wednesday. He was taken into custody November, 20, uh, November of 2019. Former President Trump said he might pardon January 6th Capitol riot rioters if he reclaims the White House. Trump spoke at a rally in Texas Saturday. He says the rioters are being treated unfairly. The Department of Justice has charged over 700 people for crimes allegedly committed during the Capitol attack. In the meantime, you had Maine Republican Senator Susan Collins, who says there's not much of a chance she would support yes, former I President Trump should he run for president in 2024. Certainly it's not likely, given the uh, many other qualified candidates that we have that have expressed interest in running. Collins was on ABC this week yesterday. I don't, you know, whether President Trump, former President Trump runs or not in 2024, that man knows how to keep himself in the public eye. You throw out there something like, hey, if I end up being president again, I'm going to pardon everybody who was part of the Capitol riot. I mean, nobody can say that he doesn't know how to make a headline, that's for sure. Chelsea Chris, a former Miss USA and correspondent for the TV show Extra, has died. Police say Chris jumped from the Manhattan apartment complex yesterday. Her win in 2019 marked the first time three black women were the reigning Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, and Miss America. Chelsea Chris was 30. <laughs> who starred in WKRP in Cincinnati, has died. His manager says the actor died Saturday in Los Angeles due to complications from colon surgery. He earned two Emmy nominations for playing the disc jockey, Dr. Johnny Fever. The CBS sitcom ran from 1978 to 1982. Howard Heffernan was 81. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk with ABC's Jim Ryan. Oh, no, just keep the change. Apparently, that's what a lot of us have said since the pandemic started. We are a very generous society, much more than we used to be when it comes to shipping. All that was Jim in just a few minutes. Nick, checking out your ride on the 91. And as you mentioned, the West Town is going to be uh, busy and stretches. You know the usual drill as you're coming out of Riverside right now from before La Sierra. Those delays will stick around through Corona, making their way past Green River. It's pretty decent for the West Town on the 91. From the 241 toll road, as you continue through with your Belinda and Ryan Hills and the Santa Ana Canyon are out of there today. Hey, you're making your way towards the 55. Now, the northbound side or westbound side of the 101, however you look at it, come away from the split will be 170. Looks like that's going to be busy for you in the Studio City adjacent area, maybe more so Sherman Village. Heading toward Coldwater Canyon, nothing important in length. If you do have an update to what's causing the delay time to 50 on your cell phone, keyword KFI traffic. KFI in the sky helps get to there faster. I'm Nick Pauley of Jamie. Take a trip back to Apartment 4D with the crew from the sitcom New Girl and rewatch the series with real life friends Zoe Deschanel, Hannah Simone, and Lamorne Morris. We could do a whole episode dedicated to Jamie. Johnson and his lack of awareness around certain technological things, especially with his phone. Listen to Welcome to Our Show on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. Brought to you by DuckDuckGo. Protect your privacy online for free with DuckDuckGo. This report is sponsored by Allstate. Saving money feels pretty good. So lower your rates, not your expectations. At Allstate, better protection costs a whole lot less. Visit allstate.com or call an agent for a quote today. This is Free Tom Pro Bowl in Wyoming. Here's what's trending from the iHeart Sports Network. Presented by Mucinex. 
The Rams punch their ticket to Super Bowl 56. Matt Gay blew the go-ahead field goal, stealing the win over the divisional rival 49ers. L.A. will host Joe Burrow and the Bengals, who are representing the AFC. Cincinnati advanced to the big game, beating the Chiefs in the overtime. And the Lakers fell to the Hawks, finishing a lengthy road trip 2-4. and four. LeBron James missed his third straight game with a knee injury. I'm Missy Jordan. Did you know that doctors use Mucinex? That's right. Mucinex is the number one OTC brand doctors trust for themselves and their families. So with the allergies and upon us, why would you use anything else? Grab Mucinex and put yourself back in control. Available at CVS. Hey, Late seven to cancel that note. Send them not in certain restrictions apply. Fifty percent loan is added in seven forty five per credit score. Firstly, no, the cash out will vary depending on equity and other factors. Seventy credit is little. NMLS three two nine zero. Loans made or arranged for through account only financing law license number six zero three six nine seven zero. Equal housing lender. How do you define the American dream? Is it becoming wealthy and making it on your own? You know that dream may not be as far off as we think, especially if you own a home, because real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth. If you're a smart homeowner, you can capitalize on your home's equity and buy more real estate. Intel Alone is offering a fixed rate home loan that gives you access to your home's equity at interest rates as low as 2.29% rate in APR with no points and no lender fees. So you can buy that income property with cash from your home's equity at 2.29% rate in APR with no points and no lender fees. So call today to find out how to build wealth with the home you already own. Call 800-918-6200. That's 800-918-6200. Or go to IntelliLoan.com. IntelliLoan. Sorrow. Smart. Hey, it's Gary and Shannon, and we are super excited. The Super Bowl is headed to L.A., and you got to join us at the Super Bowl experience presented by L.A. Yeah, this is NFL's interactive football theme park. It's going to come to L.A. for Super Bowl 56. It all starts Saturday, February 5th at the L.A. Convention Center. We're talking player autographs, the Vincent Barty Trophy, interactive games, youth football clinics, and the NFL stuff presented by Visa. Tickets start at 20 bucks. Kids 12 and under can attend free every day. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster or NFL.com slash FBX for sale or download the NFL one pass in the afternoon. Here's the deal. I've had constipation with belly pain, discomfort, and bloating for years. I tried a lot of laxatives and fiber supplements, but my symptoms keep coming back. You could have a chronic condition called irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSD. When that, or linacrotide, is a prescription medicine that treats IBSD in adults. When that works differently than laxatives, it lets you have more frequent and complete bowel movement and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms are studied in combination, not individually. Do not give one that for children less than two years old. It may harm them. Do not take Linzaf if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with blood or black stool. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzaf and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. There could be more to your story with IBSD. Talk to a doctor today. Say yes to Linzaf. Learn more at Linzaf.com or call 1-800-L-I-N-Z-E-S-S. Sponsored by Happy and Ironwood Pharmaceuticals. The smell was so repulsive and overpowering. Undaunted, I kept looking for the source of that awful stench. Hello, I'm John McClain, owner of Luter Hero Plumbing. I was 18 and I needed to earn enough money to buy some good, reliable tools. Digging trenches was honest work and it paid $35 a day. So I did it. My client's main line had collapsed and the sewage gas was overwhelming. My eyes watered, but I couldn't leave my client in that condition. I learned my work ethic from my father, who was the hardest working man I ever met. When I started Reader Hill Plumbing, I brought that work ethic to the company. We will never leave you without solving your problem. That's why my cell phone number is on the back of every Reader Hero business card. Call us at 866-377-and we'll cable that line for $77. That's 866 -377. Thank you. February 3rd. It's the biggest night of the year for podcasting. These are really some of the best and brightest and smartest and most compelling minds in the country. The 2022 iHeartRadio Podcast Award. Make plans to join us on our Facebook, YouTube, and iHeartRadio stations across America. Brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Progressive makes bundling easy and affordable. Get a multi-policy discount by combining your car, home, motorcycle, commercial, auto, and more. For all your protection in one place. Bundle and save at Progressive.com. Stimulating talk. 
The first time I heard this song, I went, I'm sorry, did they just say we're fancy like Applebee's? I mean, I love Applebee's as much as the next guy. And then we're bougie like Natty. Like, Natty Ice. I mean, you guys, you know, I grew up in Red Oak. I know some Applebee's and some natural light. Come on now. But do I write a song about it that becomes a hit? And talk about myself being fancy and bougie? And I know it. I think that I know it. I think I only know it because I had to make sure I knew the words. Thank you for that, Tyler. KFI AM 640 Live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Oh, we're fancy like Applebee's. And we're fancy like the Rams. Be the second team in NFL history to play a Super Bowl in its home stadium thanks to their 20 to 17 win over the 49ers. The number of COVID patients in LA County hospitals has dropped for its sixth consecutive day, but the state says there were 14 more people in ICU yesterday. And in-person classes will resume today at UCLA and UC Irvine, but you have to show that you have had your COVID-19 booster shot. Let's get fancy like Jim Ryan. I swear, Jim, I know you know that song. Please tell me that it overwhelmed you like it did me, and you have to sit back and go, wait, I'm sorry, what are they saying? <laughs> Is, it really, is the word bougie in that song? Bougie in that song. Bougie. Oh, it's just a great, great little dude. Hey, but you know what? They got a lot of, they got yeah. a ton of mileage out of that song. Really, oh, tons of money out of it, so good for them. All right? Yeah, right. Speaking of tons of money, apparently we have become a very generous society. Yeah, generous and getting more generous. Let's say you go into Applebee's and you order their double crunch shrimp or their hand battered fish and chips, okay? Uh, the menu price is something like eleven ninety five, right? Okay. How much do you leave as a tip when you're finished? Well, I would usually try and leave twenty percent, twenty five if somebody's really, really good. Yeah, and and I think generally people are doing that. They're doing it more than they were before. In fact, a survey by Pop Menu shows that fifty and that Pop Menu is one of these digital uh, ordering services. Fifty eight percent of consumers say they have increased the amount they typically yes, serve or they typically give to servers. And also to delivery drivers. Now, 30% have been tipping about the same, 6% have been tipping less, and then you've got the 6% who stiff every single time. Those are the ones that white cat absolutely hate, right? Yeah. But you're right, you're in, you're in the 56% who tip 20% or more. In fact, about one in five these days are tipping 25% or more. I think it's kind of a recognition that, yeah, it's a, it's a tough business. Your favorite restaurant, if you can't find wait staff, or wait staff isn't happy because they're na not making enough money, then the restaurant's going to close, either temporarily or permanently. And so people have been opening up their wallets and uh, writing a, a, a higher amount on the credit card. Well, and you know, too, there was a sign that I saw, and I think it was just online. I don't even know if I knew what the business was. But it's something like, it was something like, these workers showed up today, tipped well. And I thought, you know what, it's so true though, and not that I wouldn't have already, but that did make me stop and think, hey, thank you guys for coming to work, and their bosses, I'm sure, are thankful that they're coming to work. So, you're right, if those people weren't there, we would not probably have a restaurant to go to. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah your favorite one, your least favorite one, whether Applebee's or TGI Fridays or whatever it might be, something thank you. Um, it, 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 it's a precarious industry anyway. The, the rate of failure among restaurants is, is uh, perennially very high, and the, the turnover inside those restaurants is really high. So, you know, and that's, I think that people are starting to recognize that. And in fact, this, this same survey looks at places where people are, are tipping 20% or more. And uh, there are 38% are, uh, of the diners in Seattle are tipping 38% or more. Wow. Los Angeles comes in at 20, number 20, on the list with 23% of its people tipping 20% or more. So, yeah, it's a fairly generous bunch of All right, well, that's good to hear. I think one thing, too, that over the pandemic, a lot of us started ordering either delivery or we started just going in and picking up our food, that kind of thing. And I know that maybe in years past, I was always kind of 
How much do I tip when I go in to pick up my pizza? You know what I mean? They made it, yes, but I picked it up and that kind of thing. Now it just doesn't matter. Now it's just straight across the board, whatever it is, whatever my order is, if it's 40 bucks or whatever, great, then they get a $10 tip. That's just the way it is. But I think that even that has changed it because we've all started thinking, hey, we now see what they're doing for us because we started having to do it ourselves. Right, yeah, I think a lot of people in, in the past, you, you call the place or you place an online order and you walk into the counter and you, you pick it up and you leave. You've already paid for it online and so, yeah, why not? Yeah, but these days, the average person is tipping about 20% of the trip down right but 70% for food delivery and if they're walking in, walking up to the counter, they're on average tipping 15% of those folks. I think, yeah, you're right. Yeah, people used to read and then all you did was, you know, cook it and hand it to me. What, why am I tipping you? But um, I think that people are recognizing that that tip isn't just for the folks at the counter, the ones waiting tables, but also for the people in the back washing the dishes and cooking the food. Well, that's it. As long as I think that that pool of money is going into when I'm tipping, especially when I go and get takeout myself, if I know that that is going to everybody in the staff, that makes me feel better. And two, I mean, you got to kind of rationalize it. If we don't tip, then that means the restaurant that's might have to raise its prices. So yeah. one way or the other, we're going to get hit with it. Why not go ahead and just celebrate the people who are working hard for us anyway? Right. Yeah. It's going to have to uh, raise prices potentially or, you uh, know, the worst case scenario, close its doors at least uh, temporarily, maybe even probably cut back its hours make the menu a little bit shorter and uh, there are all sorts of consequences. I think generally Americans are kind of recognizing that now. You know, I'm wondering if this is going to be, once the pandemic's over, do we all go back to our bad behavior or do we continue to be a generous society? It's a, it's a great point. I think that certainly the restaurant industry is hoping that it's a, it's a habit that sticks with more people alone. like you and others are sticking 20%, maybe a little bit more, just out of habit in the future. But and in some cases, and it's not so much an option anymore. I mean, if you place a, 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 an order for delivery, the tip is right there on the app before you even get the food. So, you know, if it took an hour, it's too late. You've already uh, paid your tip. All right. Thank you so much, Jim. Have a great afternoon. See you again. See ya. That's ABC's Jim Ryan. Look at us. You guys, we are good. Don't let anybody tell you differently. And finally, i got to tell you about a vulture. Not a vulture. Not a man in Georgia after a really wild ride. It got crashed in the grill of a car. A woman hit the bird while she was driving in another state over the weekend. Tried to remove it herself. She couldn't find anyone to help, so she turned to cops. And officers on Tybee Island saw the vulture was still alive, so they took action. They managed to free the vulture and took it into a building to stay warm. I cannot believe that, yeah, obviously the vulture was injured, that kind of thing, and it probably wasn't fighting too much, but it's still a vulture. I'm just saying kudos to this woman who tried to free it herself. I mean, are you going to go up to your car, there's a vulture stuck to your car, and are you going to try and get the vulture off? I would hope so, but that, that also is going to take some guts. But I'm happy to say now the animal is in the care of a veterinarian. All well but ends well. All right, when we come back, we will talk with ABC's Aaron Katursky and find out once again, I think I've got some more good news for you when it comes to the pandemic, and it appears that Omicron cases are receding. Also, what do we know, if anything more, about the Omicron mutation, BA2? All that's coming up with Aaron in just a few minutes. Let's get back to Nick Taliochini, who is checking out a crash on the 60s. In the Ontario area, this go-around, Jen, on the westbound side, past Archibald. Now, when it was reported, it was already on the right shoulder, but you're definitely seeing a busy drive. 60 westbound, so the 15 as you make way past Archibald. So likely a bit of activity going on on the scene. In fact, if you're heading through this area of town, town 250 on your cell phone, keyword stay by traffic, always appreciate that heads up on the morning drive. Westbound side of the 91, Riverside to Corona, going to be a rough one for you. Pretty much solid right now, straight on through from La Sierra, leaving Riverside as you make way toward the 241. Four roads, so definitely give yourself some extra time getting out the door this morning. As you're waking up and hitting the road, it is very, very foggy for you along the coastal drive, LA County and Orange County, so again, give yourself some extra time getting out the door. Uh, can't find the sky, help get you there faster. I'm Nick Pagliacchini.
Hey all, it's Dean Sharp. Are you looking to sell your home in 2022? Well, congratulations. That is a big deal. For most of us, it's the biggest deal of all. So let's make sure you get everything out of it that you can, yeah? Before you get ready to list, make sure you call the good folks at Revive. Revive's business is to maximize your home's sale value. How? By guiding you through market critical upgrades before you sell. It's like flipping your own home, except Revive fronts the cost and guarantees results. Yes, you heard that right. No money out of pocket and a higher selling price guaranteed. You can list higher and sell faster in just a few short weeks. In fact, the average homeowner sees 160 k in additional profit. This is a no-brainer. Revive has created an easy, stress-free way to maximize your greatest asset, your home. So, are you thinking about selling? Then before you do anything, chat with an advisor at Revive. To get started, go to iloverevive.com. That's iloverevive.com. So, yeah, weather from KFI, mostly cloudy and a little bit cooler today. Had to be in the low 60s to right around 70. More clouds for tomorrow, and we're going to stay cool as well. We leave local, live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Jennifer Jones Lee. Hey, it's Dean Sharp. In 2022, where is your best chance at finding the appliances you need at the best price, in stock, and ready to deliver? WDC Kitchen and Bath Center. Go to WDCAppliances.com, WDCAppliances.com. Regrow your own natural hair with the same simple one-day treatment that I received from Advanced Hair Restoration. Get a free consultation, $250 off, and 250 free hair grabs by calling 844-333-HAIR or advancedhair.com. You wouldn't trust a butcher to babysit your pet pig. You wouldn't trust a lumberjack to repair your antique. Or a professional wrestler to be your massage therapist. So why would you trust anyone but Amco to fix your car? For over 50 years, we've been the trusted experts in transmission repair. Check engine light on, we'll check it for free. Limited time offer. Restrictions and exclusions apply. See participating centers for full details. Double A, NCO. Jennifer Jones Lee and some of the stories we're watching in the KFI 24 hour newsroom. Court documents say the father and son convicted of murdering Ahmaud Arbery in Georgia have reached a plea deal with prosecutors. Before standing trial on federal hate crime charges, all three were convicted of murder in a state trial last fall. Ahmaud Arbery's mom, of course, is very upset about this. She says that it was done behind her back. She's going to try and sway a judge to not let this happen today. The Department of Homeland Security says illegal crossings at the California-Mexico border were up 152% towards the end of the last fiscal year. In 2020, a little over 19,000 adults came across the border. In 2021, it was more than 50,000. The U.S. and Russia will face off when the U.N. Security Council meets for the first time to talk about Russia's troop buildup and threatening actions against Ukraine. The meeting was requested by the U.S. Russia's deputy ambassador calls the proposed meeting a PR site. Well, let's say good morning now to ABC's Aaron Katursky. So, Aaron, let's start out with some good news about the pandemic because we so rarely have it. Yeah, well, the caseload is coming down, Jen, and it's, uh, it's down quite precipitously in some parts of the country, including those where Omicron came through early and, and those even where it, it came through, it come through more recently. Um, so the coast and, you know, some of the interior United States, there's still an awful lot of virus out there, though. You know, the, the, the country's averaging more than 500,000 cases a day. That's down from, you know, like 900,000, but still a lot of people catching... COVID, and, <clears throat> and the outcome generally depends on whether they're vaccinated and boosted. Okay, and Omicron overall, from what we've seen, still has seemed to have a much lower death rate than, say, the Delta variant did. In general, if you're vaccinated and boosted, but otherwise, you know, the, the, the deaths are still fairly high of late. Uh, daily deaths are above 2,500. 
uh, and, and that's largely people who are not vaccinated and boosted, and, uh, and the, um, uh, but it fits when, you know, the cases are far higher than any other period of the pandemic, which they are right now. You know, I, I have a couple of friends who are not vaccinated, and what they have said to me is, I didn't get vaccinated because, yeah, Omicron, Omicron seems very contagious, but all the doctors keep saying that it's not going to hit me as hard as a, any of the other of the variants would. And it was funny, I thought, oh my gosh, the messaging that this variant might be less severe should you catch it didn't seem to that's all that people who were unvaccinated seemed to hear it wasn't still that it still had the same death possibility for you if you weren't vaccinated well you know there's an important clause right in that in that guide which is being it's mild if you're vaccinated and have your booster um if you're vaccinated and don't have your booster you're going to feel it uh and if you're unvaccinated then there's a good chance you're going to the hospital. Uh, and, and that's just how it's been in virtually every state that has gone through this wave. So doctors are still stressing the idea of vaccination. Uh, and a booster shot when the time comes after five months. The, um, the, the, that, I don't know how, you know, that's really falling on deaf ears, but the vaccinations in the country is kind of the other lot of I know that for L.A. County, I just did a story this morning, the hospitalization time dropped. They've also dropped in Orange County, but the state says they just put 14 more people in ICU yesterday. And I know some people are going to hear that and say, well, that was across the state. That's not that much. But that also means 14 more people, and you have to wonder, were those people vaccinated and boosted? Uh, I, you know, and and the, the, the numbers would suggest that they probably were, um, but... You know, there's only so many times I guess you can say it to people before they either act or do not act accordingly. Um, but the country is, uh, by and large, okay on vaccinations. It's uh, the younger kids that they're worried about now because uh, it's about 40% of eligible sign up uh, when it comes to kids that are vaccinated. That means an awful lot of children that are still vulnerable while Omicron is still circulating in lower but pretty significant numbers. All right, when it comes to BA2, sort of the Omicron subtype, I guess, uh, we've had four cases identified in L.A. County, two in Santa Clara County, and that's in Northern California. So it's here in California, and I know that we must be among you know, the, uh, the other states that have it, too. We're not the only ones. No, no, it's just uh, it's getting around uh, because it is uh, highly transmissible, just like it's the pound variant. Yeah, yeah. Um, and... It seems to be no worse than, than Omicron and seems to, to respond to vaccines in similar fashion, which is to say if you're vaccinated and boosted, it could be mild. But since it is highly transmissible, epidemiologists are watching closely to see if it adds to the case So in places that haven't yet reached the peak of Omicron, it may take longer to get there. And for places that are on the downward you know, trend, um, the, the downward may just be a little uh, shallower, not as steep uh, of a drop. Does it seem as, I know you, you said that it was transmissible, but what does it seem as transmissible as plain old Omicron? And I mean only because in the story, it just says four cases have been ID in LA County. Maybe we weren't looking for it before, but that's, it, it seems like more people are coming down with just good old Omicron and you all might be coming down with the BA2 version of it. Well, you'd have to sequence each case to know for sure, right? So if you're not, again, if you're not checking for it, you wouldn't necessarily know. Um, but so far, that's just so it does seem to be highly transmissible, just like, you know, standard Omicron. Um, but they're watching it closely just to see if it requires any kind of a different response. All right, Aaron, thanks for all that this morning. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. All right, see you later. That's ABC's Aaron Kapersky. Well, there you go. And again, let's just not hate on people who don't have a vaccine. Or who do have a vaccine. It's, you know, it's so funny in my circle of friends or whatever. I'll have so many friends who are unvaccinated. But I think, man, I wish you'd get the vaccine. Who so say to me, man, I can't believe you got vaccinated. But, guess what? We're also friends. 
And that's as far as the conversation ever goes. Because have you noticed that pack in the vaccine?